In the past two weeks we've been discussing unproduced toys, but what about the toys that did get to the toy aisles, only to be recalled due to the outrage of certain parents and the functionalities of these toys. And later these toys would end up going for a lot of money on the aftermarket. They could bite you, they could hurt you, they were in bad taste, they were inappropriate. Won't somebody please think of the children? And some of them were even radioactive. In this Ed's Retro Geek Out, we're going to be taking a look at seven toys that got banned from stores. So time to strap in for some toy history. It was a magical time in the 80s when the Cabbage Patch Kids line was introduced by Mattel. This happened at the 1983 International Toy Fair. The toys enjoyed blockbuster sales throughout the decade, and with great demand came several spin-offs, like for instance in 1996 with the Cabbage Patch Snack Time Kids. These dolls would come with plastic food that you could feed the doll. It's really and little did they know that the kids that were feeding these dolls were just inches away from a pair of one-way metal rollers, sucking in anything it could get its hands on, like hands and hair. And I thought Chucky was the baddest, toughest doll of all. The killer doll! So after many complaints and injuries, Mattel offered a cash refund of 40 bucks to the enraged parents. They made one more attempt to still sell all of these unsold toys by simply placing a warning sticker on the box. But in January 1997, the Consumer Products Safety Commission announced that the company would pull the dolls from store shelves, ending the feeding frenzy. And just in case you want to bite the bullet on getting one of these dolls, they're still out there and they have been known to sell for upwards of 500 bucks. Just when you thought you'd had seen it all with these cannibal Cabbage Patch Kids, Toy Biz produced a Marvel Deluxe set of shapeshifters in 1998. The following year, the second wave would feature the Punisher, who is also known as the Crotch Rocket Punisher, as the image will probably show you quite clearly. What do you know? I was wondering when he and I would tangle. As part of the Marvel Deluxe Shapeshifters action figures line came the Punisher that would transform into a power pistol. Now on the box it all looks pretty innocent, but when you go into gun mode something looks kind of off. I mean it's like his cannon is emerging from his butt and it didn't take long for kids to find out that when you pose them in this way you had the crotch rocket. Parents were upset with the toy being too inappropriate and aimed at children, causing this Frank Castle Transformer to be pulled from stores. A shapeshifter punisher these days will set you back about 200 bucks in the box. But this isn't the only time that certain action figures would make parents their fantasies go wild. The Rad Repeating Tarzan doll was released in 1999 by Disney. The movie inspired lead character would have two features, making sound in the form of a jungle call and the ability to move its hands up and down. Now the original packaging allowed to test this product and its functionalities, and consumers noticed something weird. The toy would move his arm to a lower position. Now hold on Buster, what are you trying out there? Parents immediately made the connection of the movement in combination with the jungle cry, and one of the Mattel spokespersons soon chipped in with, I think this is where adults look at things differently. Kids have a much more innocent concept. Now it didn't help that the sound chip for the jungle yell only made the matter more obvious to perverted minds shopping around the toy aisles. Following the customer's feedback, they changed the packaging on the toy so you can drop his arms below the waist. But then you'd still have kids buying this toy, right? I mean, they didn't pull it from the store, they just changed the packaging and brought it back to the stores. The toy functionalities would still be the same. Now I've seen toys in the original packaging go for around 50 bucks. Not too expensive, but still quite the oddity. I guess it taught Tarzan to keep that kind of monkey business out of the urban jungle. And the next entry in our banned toy list is an explosive one. The AC Gilbert Company's Atomic Energy Lab. It might not be the first, but it was the most elaborate atomic educational set out there for children. Although the toy had quite a short lifespan, 
mostly due to it costing too much for kids in the 50s. It was on store shelves from 1950 to 51 for about 50 bucks. Nowadays you're gonna have to pay more than a hundred times the original price for this toy. And that is if you want to go near this set. The set came with four types of uranium, a Geiger counter so you could verify that it was radioactive material in there, and a government manual on prospecting uranium. Despite the company saying that this was perfectly safe for children out there, I do have my doubts and this is just one of many energy labs that would continue to be produced throughout the 60s. So yeah, it's pretty dangerous and I think maybe Nintendo should have made a set and really taken that punchline to the next level. Now you're playing with power. Atomic power. And while some kids were learning to be chemists with their own little lab sets, others had their eyes set on becoming a real chef with Easy Bake Ovens. Ever since it was introduced by Kenner in 1963, the Easy Bake Oven had been a delight for amateur pre-tween cupcake chefs. However, when Hasbro started producing them as well in 1993, everything was fine until they changed something to the design in 2006. They altered the toy to be loaded from the front like real ovens. But what it also did was allow kids to stick their hands inside of the oven. They already had to recall the toy twice, but after five more reports, the toy saw cancellation in 2007. An updated version of the toy is now sold with an electric heating element instead of a light bulb. Ah! Creepy crawlers, you can make a bug, make a worm. The Creepy Crawlers was a similar toy created for kids that were more into the creepy stuff, like insects and bugs. You got some plastic goop, the consistency of syrup, and add an electric element that heats up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 149 degrees Celsius. Definitely a dangerous mix, but it was necessary for the Creepy Crawlers released in 1964. Not only were kids burning their fingers on the hot plates, but also breathing in potential toxic fumes. The current iteration features an oven that cannot be opened until the insides are cooled off again. And what better way to cool off with some refreshing air flowing from the Sky Dancers. The Sky Dancers and Dragonflies were both animated shows back in the 90s. And of course you needed to have toys when you had a cartoon, so Galoop came in with a pretty cool gimmick. The toys would allow the character to fly up in the air thanks to the foam wings. However, this wasn't so safe, and after more than a hundred reported injuries, ranging from temporary blindness to stitches, they recalled the toys in the year 2000. All eight. 0.9 million of them. Now whether you were a girl or a boy in the 80s, one of these two animated series is definitely something you'd watch. The Sky Dancers were marketed to the girls and the Dragonflies were more marketed to the boys. Both toys would defy gravity, with their helicopter wing that would fly away at an arm's length. When a child pulled the string attached to the toy, the wings would spin and the doll would take the most majestic flight and maybe in the end, end up hurting you. I actually like Dragonflies back in the day but I never got the toys and even the adult collector toy market that is all the rage right now has had some toys removed from distribution for Quentin Tarantino's movie Django Unchained they had set out to release action figures based on the characters in the movie when the toys were announced they were met with an outcry on civil rights because the toys were mocking slavery civil rights groups saw the toys as a slap in the face of their ancestors Django Unchained had become Tarantino's most successful film at the box office. The Weinstein Company said in a statement, in light of the reaction to the Django Unchained action figures, we are removing them from distribution. We have tremendous respect for the audience and it was never our intent to offend anyone. Action figures had been made for all of the Tarantino films, including Inglorious Bastards. They were meant to be collectibles for people 17 and older, which is the audience for the film. And there is definitely an audience of Tarantino film collectors out there. The 8-inch toys ended up being on sale through Amazon and other sites for a brief period of time, priced at $39.99 each. And when they were announced to be removed, some already went up on the same sites by private parties for up to 5000 bucks for a figure. Maybe these toys should have never been made. And that was my first dive into recalled and banned toys. I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of Toy History. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to see what I have in in store for you next week. Ah, oh, in store. Poor choice of words. Thanks in advance for leaving a like and a comment and I will gladly see you back next week in an all new episode. Bye!